you might have seen tom scott's video where the title of the video updates itself with the views in the video tom says that although he wrote the code it might not always be accurate but we all know that this was not true it was freakishly accurate and the title keeps updating as we refresh the page Another of my favorite YouTube channels Fireship uploaded a video explaining how this is done. Although this video is really well made and even if the nerd in me enjoys watching such content, it wasn't enough once I started trying to achieve this on my own. But I decided to keep trying nonetheless in the hopes of being able to document the process so that I can create a much more concise tutorial for future YouTubers. If you are a talk is cheap show me the code kind of person I have a no bs straight to code section in this video you can skip to get directly into the implementation so the straight to code section will make sense to you right away if you are an intermediate or advanced level developer who is already familiar with using apis and cron jobs and such but if you are a beginner or someone who has never done any programming before trying to do this on your own without really knowing some background detail might make you really confused so let me gear down a bit and try to explain what exactly we are going to do apis or application programming interfaces are how two different programs can communicate with each other If a product that you use say like YouTube or Facebook has got its own API then it means that you can use an API to write a program that can communicate with the app and do things like exchange data or execute a piece of code that results in a certain action the YouTube data API v3 that we are going to use for this project has mainly two different mechanisms for authorization that is to check if someone is using the api legitimately you can either generate an api key which is just a string that permits you to read data or an oauth 2.0 credential the oauth credential links to your account and you can do much more stuff with it in short you get all the privileges that you get when you create an account and log in this means that we can use the oauth credential to update the video characteristics such as the title or the description or even permanently delete videos themselves but apis themselves are not enough you can run the code once and it will update your title with the latest view count but you need the title to always be updated with the latest views this calls for a cron job a piece of code that you can schedule and run periodically at a fixed time interval for the foreseeable future although fireship and tom scott himself probably used firebase to host their code as a serverless cloud function that reruns every few minutes i use data to achieve this in this video data can be called as the micro cloud as they say in their website their mission is to make development sane and to bring back the simplicity in coding you will see in a moment why this is true with data you can go from project setup to deployment within seconds now to the flesh of this video the code so i have uploaded all the code that i used to update the title of this video as a public repository on github and you can clone this repo and use it as a starting point as i said earlier we will be using data to deploy our code as a cloud function and to run a cron job for this you need to create an account at data you can avail their free plan that provides databases hosting and a bunch of other cool stuff You also need to install the data CLI the command line tool in your machine in order to create and deploy apps. Now back to our project in hand, clone the repo and cd into the project directory and run data new to create a new data micro. This is how we are going to deploy our app. At this stage we can run data deploy to deploy our project. But there's no point in doing that without having the code up. We'll do that once we add all the other necessary information. Now go to your Google Cloud dashboard and create a new app there. From the API dashboard, add YouTube Data API v3 to your project. Come back to your dashboard and create a new OAuth credential. In order to do this, you might need to give some basic information regarding your app to create an OAuth consent screen. This is what shows up when you try to log in to your app with your Google account. So once this is generated, you will get a client secret.json file you need to save it inside your project directory noticed how when we log in with google we get a screen that asks to permit the app yeah we'll get that if we try to use the api with our account so in order to avoid asking for permission every time we make a request we need to generate something known as an access token in the project directory run npm install if you haven't yet and then run npm start to start a server in your local machine once the server is started you will get a url in your terminal and will be prompted to enter a code So copy this URL into your browser and you will be asked to log in via your Google account. Make sure to log in via the account from which you posted the video whose title you want to change. Once logged in you get a code in the URL which you can copy and paste it back into your terminal and boom you generated your access token. Now what you need to do is to paste the credentials uh, that you got from the client secret.json file 
and also the access tokens that you just generated into the code where you declare these variables. I would recommend you to save these credentials as an environment variable and then accessing them via your code and not hard coding them directly. But I am just doing this here for the sake of simplicity. Once you do this, you can edit the update title function and add the ID of the video that you want to change the title of into the function parameters. Now inside the update title function, you can retrieve whatever information you want about the video such as the number of views or the number of comments or the number of likes and such and you can set the new title using these variables. Now for the magic of using data, all you need to do to get this up and running is to run just two commands. First you need to run data deploy that deploys your code on the server. Secondly, you need to start a cron job with the fixed time interval so that your code will be run at the period of this fixed time interval. So if you say data set cron 2 minutes, your code will be run every 2 minutes and your video title will be updated every 2 minutes with the latest view count. If you are able to do all this, then congrats. Your code is now live. If you want to see any of the logs on the server, you can use the visor from the data project dashboard. Let us keep in mind that this is just a starting point and knowing how to use the YouTube API even at a very rudimentary level can let YouTubers get creative with the content they are producing. This is not just limited to showing the number of views in the title. You can use the API to automate some other task and make your content more engaging and enjoyable. So as the conclusion to this video, the point I'd like to make is that to be able to do something so effortlessly that would otherwise take a lot of human effort feels like learning programming gives you a whole new superpower. And it is for such little moments of happiness where your code runs without any errors that I think is the most rewarding part of this job. Hope you had fun and learned something from this video. So until the next one, see you.